Just a couple old pals. Just a couple old beauties. Hey, everyone. Steve Dangle here. I'm here with, uh, uh, what's your name again? Can you introduce yourself? Uh, Denzel Washington. Oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Man on Fire. PK Subban. That's a great movie. Hey, hold on, Steve, because you got a strong following on YouTube. I'm a new YouTuber. I want to tell all the fans, make sure you follow me on YouTube. PK Subban, let's go. Boom. I got, I got to charge you for that. No problem. <laughs> hey, man, li listen, it seems like you've been enjoying yourself over the past little while. Mm -hmm. How do you get to work out with The Rock? Great question. Um, well, I, I, I'm also engaged to a pretty awesome human being. Right. Um, you know what? I met Dwayne uh, for the first time. Dwayne. I met Dwayne. Do you Dwayne. love that? Tell me you <laughs> love that. And you know I plugged that on purpose because everyone's like, oh, here he goes. He's calling up first name basis. <laughs> first name <laughs> basis. Um, well, okay, hold on. First of all, I, I can't call him the rock when I see him. Like, I can't be like, hey, what's up, rock? Like, I'm not, you got to call him DJ or Dwayne. So, uh, you know, listen, anyway, uh, the first time I met DJ was last summer on the baller set. Um, Lindsay's like, Hey, DJ's in town. Let's go over the baller set. And I actually posted a video, uh, you know, talking to him. And I did like a lit little thing where I was asking him questions. And I, it doesn't matter. And then he got me back and we sort of connected there. I'm sure he thought I was a huge super fan and a doofus actually, but I've been a huge fan of the rock since I was like seven, eight years old, watch wrestling all the time. Um, only because of the rock and stone cold Steve Boston, but mainly the rock, um, used all of his tags, just like everybody else, all of his slogans all the time. And, uh, this summer, I guess Lindsay was just like, Hey, uh, you want to go work out with DJ on Saturday? I was like, yeah, let's do it. So, um, we went to the iron paradise. I don't think anybody's worked out there other than Lindsay and I, I think we're like the first two people to ever work out at his gym. It was awesome. Like it was an amazing experience. And yeah, the rest is history. You guys saw what I posted. It was pretty cool. What else you've been doing this this whole time? Because what the first thing we saw when we saw the back to play schedule, mm -hmm. and then when they're hoping to start the next season is, oh my god! Like the seven teams that aren't in it might have like nine months off or yep. something. So what have you been doing with your time besides building a giant podcast garage? <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, the podcast. I started the podcast for two reasons, and this is very very important for people to understand because. I think that's also why I encourage people to watch it um, because I want it, first of all, to be educational. I want to be able to give fans, and not just my fans, but anybody who watches, insight into some of the most successful people in sports entertainment and business. Give them insight that they wouldn't normally get from watching an interview on Sportsnet or ESPN or anywhere else. And, you know, I'm very, very lucky and privileged to, you know, first of all, have my relationship with WME, where I can obviously get in touch with a lot of these people that I'm trying to pull on. Um, and through my relationships, I'm able to try to get other people on that maybe most people don't even know that I know. So getting Gary on in episode one and in episode two, having Jerry Bruckheimer, um, you know, is a great start for me. So uh, hopefully this doesn't air before I drop that. So please hold on tight to this one. But yeah, having those two on to start is great. And I think that people are going to see the consistency with a lot of my guests is that they're very hardworking people, extremely professional, and they're people that you should follow and want to learn more about because uh, those are the only people that I'm targeting. The second uh, part of why I'm doing this is because I'm not playing. There's going to be hockey on. I got so much time and I'm so passionate about the game and it sucks not playing. So the only way that I can really feel a part about the game is watching games and giving maybe some fans insight from a player that's playing right now, still playing in my career. I think that's there's value to that. So hopefully fans like it. And so far, it's been great. Your analysis is better than mine. I'm just learning how to do crossovers. Oh, stop. <laughs> but speaking of your analysis, so... Yeah. I mentioned on my podcast that I was going to be talking to you mm -hmm. and obviously the Leafs just got eliminated yeah. the last night mm -hmm. uh, at the time we're recording this. Yeah. Um, there was a, I, I went through all 70 games before the playoffs began. Yeah. And I tried to find the, if there was a theme to the season, if there was a, like a flavor or something and something that we've had with the Leafs over the past few years is, blown leads 
And, you know, like their 8-6 game against Carolina, it was super fun. People forget that that comeback, they were actually up 3 nothing, then blew it and had to come back from that. But there was one game in particular that you were part of that kind of shook me. The Leafs were up, I think it was 4 nothing on New Jersey, and I want to say 6-1. And you guys made it 6-4. I think you scored the fourth goal. In Toronto, and just yeah. the look on your face, the ah. Like, I saw in your face, PK, you're like, we can do this. We can come back <laughs> against these guys. Yep. What is it? It doesn't need to be Leaf specific. You, yeah. can talk about, you can talk about what it is about that group that allows you to claw back in a game like that or – maybe draw upon your hundreds and hundreds of games of experience as a defenseman. What happens in those moments where a team just starts banging in goals, one, two, three, four at a time? Well, first of all, you have to look at it like this. I, I think that as a, when you look at the Toronto Maple Leafs team, they know that it's going to be very hard pressed for them not to make the playoffs. They have so much talent, so much skill on that team they can score goals and, you know, we know that most nights it's going to be very, very difficult for you to stop Austin Matthews, John Tavares, William Nylander, Mitch Marner, you know, to stop these superstars in the league every night, you're not going to do it. Yeah, they're going to go through slumps and just like every team does and players do, but they have some high end talent on that team. So at the end of the season, they should be there. Um, for our team at that specific time, obviously we're battling for a playoff spot. So what you're seeing is, is that as a veteran player on my team in New Jersey, I don't have time to look at the standings and, and say whether we're in a game or not. My only objective is to try to help our team, will our team to get points and out of every game, whether that's one point, whether that's two points, we're scratching and clawing for every point we can down the stretch. So, you know, I don't think that was so much about the Leafs. I think that was more about us as a team and what we were willing to do to win at that moment in time. You know, I can speak specifically, though, to what it's like for the Toronto Maple Leafs right now because I played on some really good teams in the NHL. You know, playing in Nashville, when I played there for those three years and we have President's uh, Cup championship teams, we got a Stanley Cup, uh, obviously, final team. Nice jersey. Nice jersey. <laughs> I like it. Um, when I played on that team, there were many nights where we played teams that probably shouldn't have been in games with us. And there were teams that came back on us when we had leads as well. Um it's a long season, man. It's a long season. And I think that Toronto as a team, they're still learning how to be an elite team every night. And that's a difficult thing to do in the NHL now, man, because when I look back to even when I came in the league, you could circle games on your calendar and be like, that's a win. That's a win. That's a win. That's two points. You could look at your calendar and be like, oh, we got 12 games this month. We're going to win eight out of the 12 games. Like you can't do that anymore. Whether you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, Nashville Predators, and New Jersey Devils, every game you can lose. So it's, you have to, it's, it's tough to win, man. Like it's tough to win. The teams that win consistently in this league, they got a great mix of veteran and young players. And like you look at the St. Louis going on that nine game winning streak. Well, look at their team. Like, look how their team is built. They won a Stanley Cup for a reason. So it's difficult. In Toronto, there's a lot of pressure on those top guys. And, you know, you, you'll see what they do this offseason with the team. But, uh, you know, I think that people have to realize that the NHL is different now than it's ever been. There's so much parity in the league. So you think it's harder now than even when you began in 2000? Oh, 100%. What was it, nine? No yeah. question. No question. As far as parity goes in the league, yes, the league is much, much more well-balanced in my opinion. It doesn't mean that the hockey's tougher. I just think that there's way more competitive teams, way more competitive teams. Is is there anyone in the league right now that makes you go, oh, no one could do that when I was a rookie? Um, no, because I'm always one of those guys that has an open mind. You know, mm -hmm. as much as I have a respect for the culture of the game and where the game um, started and the growth of the game, I'm also understanding that the game is different now. The age has dropped. Players are much younger. So you're going to see a lot of things that you don't traditionally see. That doesn't mean it's bad. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think it's it's bad. It's just growth is good. Growth can be good. And re remember, the focus now, as much as it is to protect culture and the things that we like about the game, 
it's also important to push culture forward and allow these young players to be themselves and allow them to grow. And you see a guy like Austin Matthews, like I think he's great for the game. He's obviously a superstar player. He brings it, but he he wants to show his personality and show who he is. And I think that's important. So we need to have more players buying into that. And I think that's what we're seeing. Well, PK, uh, I'm very excited to have you on this channel and I'm very excited to see uh, what you do with yours. Uh, you, you got to drop Dwayne's name. Uh, I, I actually got to leave. I'm about to be on Tim and Sid. So uh, yes, I, hey, I guess I'll, I'll have to catch you later. Please say hi to Tim and Sid for me. I love those guys. They're the best. Now that I don't play in Canada anymore, they don't call me to talk, but it's okay. Tell them I still love them. <laughs> wow. Okay. I will tell them that. I will tell them that. All right, Dangle. Thanks for having me on, brother. All right. Take care, man. Okay. Bye. Hey, and make sure you tell your fans like and subscribe. PK Subban YouTube channel. Let's go. I got to catch you in subscribers. Since back then. Oh, look at that. You see that? What a see picture. See these children? I love it. Two I young actually, studs. So I, I slept through my alarm and I almost <laughs> missed the train downtown that day. I hadn't showered. That's why I'm so greasy. <laughs> so sorry about that. My bad. Thanks, Dangle. You're a good man. <laughs> Bye now. Yeah, see you, dude.